This is the iconic SP from Mazda. They say it's a proper rotary powered successor for the RX-7, but there are a few catches and over the past decade, Mazda's made rotary promises that they haven't kept. So how excited should we be about the iconic SP? Let's find out. But first, if you've watched this channel before, you may be wondering who I am. Scott is off shooting something special in the American desert, so I'm filling in. I'm Tiernan and I help create the videos on Overdrive. This isn't my first encounter with rotary. As a producer with Donut Media, we gave away a rotary-powered FC RX-7. One thing that experience taught me is that rotary enthusiasts are really enthusiastic. So when I say that rotary spent a decade in decline, I'm gonna need to explain myself. And here's what I mean. Peak rotary is the FD RX-7's 13B. Early versions had as little as 236 horsepower, but by the end of its run in 2002, the FD was available with 276 horsepower. For a long time, 276 horsepower was the maximum power that Japanese automakers would claim. This was to avoid crackdowns from lawmakers who feared cars were getting too fast. So when you see 276, the real output is often higher. When the RX-8 debuted in 2002 with Mazda's new Renesis engine, those government crackdowns weren't a concern. Some early cars had as little as 192 horsepower, and the RX-8 peaked at just 235 less than the lowliest FD RX-7. Then in 2009, Mazda produced a dual fuel version of the Renesis. Those were fitted to just 30 RX-8s and leased to an alternative fuel project in Norway. These were more experiment than production ready engine, but they show how low Mazda's rotary could go. When burning hydrogen, those made just 107 horsepower. Rotary couldn't get any worse, right? Well, hold on because it does. That'll come about 10 years later after the RX-8 got the ax in 2012. And that's when a decade of broken promises began. Mazda knew the lack of a turbo made the RX-8 disappointing, and they didn't wait long before announcing a replacement. In 2012, Mazda claimed a true successor to the RX-7 was on its way and would launch for the 50th anniversary of Mazda's rotary in 2017. That seemed plausible. Mazda had already developed a new rotary engine dubbed the 16X, which supposedly had 300 turbocharged horsepower. No 16X powered RX-7 successor ever appeared. Hope returned in 2016 when Mazda revealed a new rotary engine patent. Unlike the RX-8's Renesis, this new design had a turbo and three rotors. RX-7s had always been twin rotor and the rare triple rotors were reserved for the Japan only Cosmo and Mazda's race cars. Rumors suggested that this new engine would go into a sports car based on the RX Vision concept, unveiled at the Tokyo Motor Show a few months earlier. Those rumors lingered for five more years into 2020, with sources claiming there would be something called an RX-9 with the new rotary engine. Again, no car appeared. Finally, in 2021, after a decade of rumors and false hope, Mazda confirmed that Rotary was back and somehow it was worse than ever. I promise there is light at the end of this tunnel, but it starts somewhere very unlikely. That's the 2023 Mazda MX-30, an electric crossover SUV that isn't very good. It's only available with front wheel drive, making it a pretty lousy SUV. And it only has a range of 100 miles, making it a pretty lousy EV. Mazda fixed one of those problems with a rotary. Unfortunately, they didn't fix the front wheel drive problem with a 300 horsepower turbo rotary powering the rear. Instead, Mazda solved the EV range problem by adding a 0.8 liter single rotor engine as a range extender. Essentially a gasoline fueled generator, a tiny rotary to recharge the MX-30's tiny battery. They called it the MX-30 REV, and to make space for that tiny rotary, they shrunk the battery even more, giving it a pure electric range of just 53 miles. But with a full tank of fuel, the rotary range extender gives it 423 miles between fill-ups. That's actually pretty good, but it's also confusing. Rotaries have been associated with high revving performance cars, so a rotary in a hybrid seems weird. Electric motors are incredibly good at converting stored energy into power. Just look at electric cars zero to 60 times. Where EVs fall short is with storing that energy. That's why the MX-30 has such a terrible range. Its battery is rated at 30 
32 kilowatt hours of stored energy, one gallon of gasoline stores 33.7 kilowatt hours of energy, more than that entire battery. A less efficient combustion engine charging batteries for a more efficient electric motor turns out to be a good idea. That's why lots of plug-in hybrids, specifically series hybrids, already do this with standard piston engines. So why is Mazda using a rotary instead? Well, they're not just being Mazda -y. Rotaries could be a better choice for hybrid EVs. You probably know the basics of rotaries by now. Piston engines reciprocate, going up, down, up, down. Rotaries have rotors that continuously rotate in one direction. A typical piston engine uses four strokes, or movements of the piston, one each for intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. That's all happening inside the cylinder. Instead of cylinders, rotaries have a rotor housing with different areas for intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust. That gives rotaries a couple of distinct advantages, and a big one is small size. A typical piston engine has a valve train at the top above the combustion chambers where power is made. Then there are pistons, connecting rods, and a crankshaft making up the bottom end. The bottom end serves the singular purpose of turning linear energy at the pistons into rotational energy at the crank. In a rotary, rotational energy stays rotational. That means a smaller size and fewer parts. Everything is tightly packaged around a rotating center. Tight packaging is good for hybrid EVs because those include two complete power sources, electric and combustion. Since rotaries are smaller than equivalent piston engines, they fit better. And because the rotor never changes direction, rotary engines can also spin faster than piston engines. That's a benefit for hybrid EVs as well. In a series hybrid, the combustion engine is only connected to an electrical generator. That works like the alternator in a normal car to recharge the battery. The faster the combustion engine can spin that generator, the faster it can recharge the battery. So high revs, like you get with a rotary, make for a better battery charger. And rotary engines also generate more power than an equivalent sized piston engine, another feature that makes them a better choice for the limited space available in hybrid EVs. There are other important factors which contribute to rotaries making big power from small displacement, but there are lots of good videos explaining why that matters, so I won't get into it here. Just know that Mazda's 13B made 276 horsepower with only 1.3 liters of displacement. Compare that to GM's L3T. The L3T uses technology that's decades newer than the 13B, but manages just 155 horsepower. But if rotaries are so great, why aren't they everywhere and in every hybrid EV already? Well, there are some specific drawbacks like heat and wear. In a piston engine, the combustion stroke heats the cylinders, but the intake stroke draws in fresh air and fuel that cools the cylinders back down. In a rotary, one section of the housing only ever experiences combustion over and over without any cooling effect from intake. That creates unequal thermal expansion across the housing. If that goes on for long enough, it can rupture seals and warp the metal. And there's the notorious apex seals. Those are at the tips of the triangular rotor. They maintain the compression necessary for the engine to function. But the constant friction between apex seals and the housing breaks those down. Replacing them requires a complete teardown of the engine. But if a rotary engine is only used to recharge an EV battery instead of sending power to the wheels, it doesn't need to run all the time. Since it's not running constantly, it has more time to cool and experiences less wear to its apex seals. Rotary doesn't just make sense for hybrids. Hybrids make sense for rotaries, because that setup helps mitigate some of rotary's issues. But even with a rotary charging its battery, the MX-30 is still a slow, boring crossover in a world full of slow, boring crossovers. Why should it give us hope for a fun-filled rotary future? One big reason is money. The REV shows that Mazda is willing to spend money developing rotary engines. Want more proof? Mazda's CEO reinstated the rotary engine development team. That's a group of 36 engineers whose only job is to develop rotary powertrains. And there's two more pieces of evidence that a Mazda rotary sports car is on the horizon. Between 2019 and 2023, Mazda filed half a dozen new rotary patents. Those showed a system designed for rear wheel drive with a rotary hybrid powertrain and up to three electric motors. Patent drawings also showed a coupe body, power plant behind the front wheels, and a transaxle at the rear. 
That's an ideal configuration for a sports car. It keeps the weight between the wheels and balanced front to rear. The other evidence is the iconic SP concept car. Mazda sources have said that this time it really is laying the groundwork for an eventual RX-7 successor, and they've revealed some crucial info to support that. It'll have a twin rotor engine and 50-50 weight distribution like the FD, 365 horsepower, which is a lot more than the FD, and pop-up headlights. But it's not all good news. If the iconic SP gets built, its rotary engine will not be driving the wheels. Like the MX-30, it'll be a series hybrid. Those 365 horsepower will be coming from electric motors. To me, that doesn't really sound like a rotary sports car. It sounds like a hybrid EV that happens to have a rotary. And the iconic SP and inherits one of the biggest problems for hybrids. Because they have two complete power sources, hybrids are heavy. Mazda claims around 3,200 pounds, which is okay for a modern car, but that's four to 500 pounds more than an FD RX-7 and nearly 1,000 pounds more than an MX-5 Miata ND. So what do you think? Is the Iconic SP really a rotary sports car? Is Mazda going to keep its promise this time? Or are rotary sports cars really dead? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.